Welcome. My name is Mateen, and my colleague is Dr. Ivan Bayic. Today we are going to be discussing a new library called Cauliflow that can be used to execute collaborative intelligence graphs. So first we're going to introduce the idea of collaborative intelligence. Then we'll look at specific examples in which the users of this library can perform a specific computational task. Then we'll give a short demo on an Android device. And lastly, we'll have time for Q&A at the very end. So what is collaborative intelligence? Collaborative intelligence, the idea of sharing a computational workload across multiple devices in order to perform inference of a deep learning model. A deep learning model can be split across the network so that an edge device, which has a smartphone, performs the first half of the inference, transmits the intermediate features over the network into the cloud, and then the server completes the remaining inference. The transmitted size of these intermediate features is often smaller than uh, the size of the input image. Thus, we lower the upload bandwidth usage in comparison to transmitting the entire original input image to the server. This often comes with a variety of benefits, including reduced energy usage, lower inference times, and savings in network data usage. Our library, Cauliflow, allows users to construct collaborative intelligence graphs that can span across multiple devices. Cauliflow provides a way for developers to easily integrate collaborative intelligence techniques into their own applications. It also provides a quick and simple way for researchers to test their collaborative models on actual hardware without needing to implement everything from scratch. We also provide a common API that can be used to uh, and various platforms and uh, languages, including Kotlin for Android as well as Python. On the right, we see an example of a collaborative intelligence graph. This graph is formed by linking together various modules. Just like in PyTorch, users can declare their own custom modules by inheriting from the module class and overriding the forward method. This slide shows how to define a client-side graph, like the one shown in the diagram. We take an input frame, pass it through the client-side deep model, compress the resulting feature tensor via a JPEG encoder, and then send the result over the network to the server subgraph. The definition for this server subgraph will be shown on the next slide. Notice the way in which the graph is constructed within the code. Modules are linked together by a functional API in a style similar to popular deep learning frameworks such as PyTorch and Keras. Now we define the server subgraph, which is visualized by the cloud in the diagram. This can be done directly from within the client-side code itself. The server receives the compressed JPEG encoded feature data from the client and then decodes it. Then the server runs the reconstructed feature data through the server-side deep model, and then it sends the top three prediction labels back to the client. Although we can define this subgraph within the client-side code, the server-specific modules must be implemented on the server itself. Finally, we put it all together. Here we show how we can push frames from a video source through the client graph. The resulting prediction labels are then printed to the output. Server-side code is fairly simple. Starting the server opens up a TCP port or which the server receives subgraphs from clients. The server then runs those subgraphs. As we see on the previous slides, 
when the server receives intermediate feature tensor data from a client, the server decompresses that data and recompletes the second half of the inference. The server then sends the results back to the client. Next, we look at a demo on an Android device. This was demoed at NeurIPS 2019 last year, and it involves an Android device acting as the edge client and, the, and a Linux machine acting as the cloud server. With Cauliflow, users can define collaborative intelligence graphs via a functional API, run them across a network, use reactive instantions to represent observable streams of data, and use built-in modules for feature tensor data compression and transmission. Thank you for attending this presentation. Cauliflow is available on GitHub. If you have any specific questions, please feel free to post an issue on the GitHub tracker or ask them here. Thank you.